Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda 
Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dwaita Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya 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 Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya 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 Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai So whenever I come to Radha Gopinath for Gaur Purnima, I'm sitting where you're sitting. <laughs> and I prefer to do that because it's always Radhanath Maharaj who is enlightening all of us. But for those who don't know it, he's coming on the 26th of this month. So. For those who know it, they can even be more happy. <laughs> so I'm going to try to say something in the position of a student who doesn't, is still learning. Vande Sri Krishna Chaitanya Nityanando Sano Dito Goro Daya Pushpanvanto Chitra Sando Tamo Nudo. This is from Chaitanya Charitamrita, the second verse from Adi Lila. I offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Krishna Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, who are like the sun and the moon. They have risen simultaneously on the horizons of Goda to dissipate the darkness of ignorance and thus wonderfully bestow benedictions upon all. Mm. It's a beautiful verse in the Chaitanya Bhagavat. Ajanu lambita bhujo kanakama dato sankirtanai papitaro kamalaya takso Vishwam Bharo Dvijavaro Yugadharma Falo Vande Jagat Priyakriyo Karuna Avataro Describing the glories and the qualities and the transcendental form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu along with Lord Nityananda. Hmm. The pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has um, as Vrindavan Das Thakur says, he says, I'm standing on the ocean of the devotion of the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I'm simply trying to taste one drop of that ocean of nectar. He says that one drop is enough to drown the whole world in love of God. <laughs> What does that mean? Is that the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is un, like an unlimited ocean. It's so deep and so sweet that only even one drop of Lord Chaitanya's mercy can drown the whole world of love of God. This is Mahaprabhu. His appearance in the world is something very rare. Sri Krishna himself appears throughout the different manifestations of the ages in different forms to pravitravanam sadunam vinaisanaya chaduskritam sadharma samstapanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. He comes whenever there is reasons to eliminate those who are demoniac, irreligious, 
and again reestablished by his presence true religious principles. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doesn't come so often as much as Krishna does in his different manifestations and forms. Of course, Krishna also, in his transcendental form as Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dham also, is a rare manifestation of the appearance in this particular world. So it says that in every yuga the Lord appears in a particular form. But after 1,000 yuga cycles, that means more than 2 million, 3 million, 3 million, 200,000 years, and then you multiply that, it's three, 320 million, 320 million years, and then you time that by 100, that's 3 billion. Three, three billion. <laughs> it's, I've lost the sense of numbers, but it's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. Nobody can even conceive of the amount of time that passes before Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears in this world. And only when he comes and Krishna precedes his appearance at the end of Dapura Yuga, is the possibility that the living entities in this world of Bard Bhumi can actually attain to the position of going back home to the spiritual world in Sri Vrindavan Dham. Only then, when Mahaprabhu appears, after Krishna appears, is the door to Vrindavan allowed to be opened. And of course, very few can make it into that door. It's a rare place. <laughs> but in all the other ages, the Lord manifests Himself, and Vaikuntha is available. But it's very difficult. But that's the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is Krishna Himself. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha, Krishna Nahiyanya. He appears. It's described in the Chaitanya Mangala by. Lochan Das Dakor, <clears throat> that one time when Sri Krishna was in Dwarka, he was surrounded by his queens, and he was in a particular palace with his principal queen, Rukmini Devi. And Rukmini was there, and she was massaging the lotus feet of Sri Krishna, Dwarka dish. And in her massaging his lotus feet, she became so overwhelmed with love that her emotions were like an unlimited ocean that was pouring forth from her being. And then she started to speak. And she said, you don't know how wonderful your lotus feet are. And she kept saying it over and over. You don't know how wonderful your lotus feet are. And Krishna's there, he's listening. <laughs> and then she finally says, actually, only one person in all of existence knows how wonderful your lotus feet are. And that is Srimati Radharani. So the Lord is hearing that, and he becomes a little curious. I don't know how wonderful I am. <laughs> There's a story where Krishna was in Dwarka, he was walking and he passed one pillar. And the pillar had a reflection image on it. So anything passes reflects, it was like a mirror. So Krishna walked past it and then he looked and he came back and he said, who's that? Oh, that's me. <laughs> he was really, <laughs> so Krishna, <laughs> He's even attracted to himself because he's the best. <laughs> There's no more that's why his name is Krishna, because he's all attractive. And so now he's thinking, I have to find out how wonderful I am, and I can't understand that from my position. So as it's described in the Shastras, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita by Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, the Lord manifests himself 
for three external reasons in this world and for three internal reasons. The three internal reasons, as we were describing, is to understand what is the nature of Radharani's love for him. What is the quality of that love that is so strong that attracts her completely, absorbed in thinking about him, serving him, and expressing unlimited happiness in that loving relationship. And that is actually the second reason. What is the nature of that happiness that she experiences in relationship to her love for him? Krishna could not understand that from the position of being the supreme object, so he takes the role of the subject. <laughs> and now he wants to understand himself from her position. That is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's Krishna, but he's, uh, he's in her mood in order to understand her love for him. And the third reason is what is it about him that is so attractive, that attracts her love in such a way that there's, that she cannot think of anything else but Krishna all the time. How to serve Krishna, how to please Krishna, how to perform various types of pastimes which attract the mind of Krishna, how to act in such a way as to give pleasure to Krishna all the time. And that's Radharani's love. In fact, <clears throat> it says there's two things you can never, ever understand. Nobody can understand it. And that is Radharani's love for Krishna and Krishna's qualities, <laughs> which attract Radharani's love. So in that loving relationship, Krishna becomes her mood. It's described in the Navadvip Mahatmya. When Krishna was about to appear in that incarnation as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was in Vrindavan with Radharani. And they were together. And he was explaining or describing about his appearance in the world as his golden avatar. And uh, Radharani, she was thinking, you're going to appear in my mood, in a form in this world? You can't live. <laughs> you won't be able to live. You'll go completely mad, and you won't be able, you won't be able to ex sustain your existence. Therefore, I know I cannot do anything but help you. So she said, I'll give you my color. <laughs> and that color will protect you <laughs> from all devastation. So we know Lord Chaitanya is known as Goranga. And she is Gorangi. Taptakanchira Gorangi. That hey Vrindavaneshwari Vrishavanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye. She is very dear to Krishna, and he has accepted both her color and her mood of devotion. The external reasons are what we say secondary, as internal is always superior to external. And in those reasons, as it's explained, <clears throat> during the time prior to the advent of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And you'll see this in all of the incarnations of the Lord, that there's always some difficulty on the earth planet before the Lord appears. Yada yadahi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharatam abhutanam the dharmasya tatatmanam sajamiham pravitranayam sadunam vinasanaya chaduskritam dharma samstarpanataya sambhavami yuge yuge. So Krishna says <clears throat> that to kill demons, he, he doesn't have to come personally. He can create some earthquake or some catastrophe in this material world, and he can swallow up so many demons, millions of demons. That's not a problem. But sometimes, using the excuse of the coming to kill demons, he comes to give pleasure to his devotees. <laughs> I mean, that's a side program. 
It's just like, you know, if you have a particular activity that you are in a main activity in life, you have a little hobby on the side. So killing demons is like a hobby. <laughs> Yeah, just, and today's demon, today's demons, they're like they're nothing compared to Hiranyakashipu and you know Ravana and Kamsa. These, these were really big demons. Today they got today's demons are like paper mache. They're like nothing. They're just pieces of you know dust. <laughs> Not a demon now. So now Krishna has. When Prabhupada said. He was talking about that. He said the demons are increasing. They're going to increase more and more and more. But don't worry, Krishna's here. He's here in the holy name. So if you take shelter of Krishna's holy name, that the holy name can protect you from the effects of the demonic influence completely and perfectly. So, Kali Kale Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar Nama Hoiti Haya Sarvajigat Nishtarahi. Krishna has come in two forms, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he manifests his his other self as the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. So on the excuse of some trying to rectify the, the present materialistic civilization in the area of Navadweep, the Lord came. But in order, there's a second reason, is that Sri Advaita Acharya, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself, he is actually Sada Shiva, with a combination of, Maha, he's actually Mahavishnu actually, and he's, he has an element of Sada Shiva also. And so he is the compassionate manifestation of Lord Chaitanya's appearance. In that compassion, he is feeling so distress that the conditioned souls are wasting their valuable human life by not worshiping the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotion. The goal, and the only goal of life, is Prema Pumartha Maha, to develop love of God. If one doesn't come to the platform of devotional service, then Shrama Eva Hi Kevalam, everything that one does, ends in ultimately sadness, frustration, and disappointment. Only those who take to the process of devotional service, their life becomes auspicious, and they're on their way back home, back to God, and it's only a matter of time before they achieve eternal happiness and full transcendental knowledge. And so Advaita Acharya, he is feeling so unhappy and he wants because what is he seeing people are worshiping demigods they're making images of the different deities of the demigods and performing worship to get rupam devi yeso devi danan devi janan devi dehi not devi dehi i'm sorry my my Hindi is pretty bad here. Dehi. Dehi means give me. Give me wealth. Give me followers. Give me give me all kinds of sense gratification. So, and the demigods, and they have that position in order to satisfy that. But as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, so whatever the demigods can give, they're coming from me. And whatever they give is temporary and it ultimately ends in frustration. Because anything material can never satisfy the living entity. And so this was going on. And there was a lot of intellectualism. There was a lot of worship. There was Shakti worship. People were resorting to all kinds of forms of worship worshiping the devas. Sometimes they were worshiping cats and dogs also. It's described that in the frustration of material life, when you get tired of doing some kind of material sense gratification, you look for something different because that wears out and then that also wears out. So they were becoming bored. So they, what they were doing was marrying cats and dogs together and having marriages and spending money in order to invite people to see weddings of animals. 
You know, that's quite ridiculous to give a good terminology. So this is going on. And demigod worship and various types of shakta worship. Um, and hardly anyone, hardly anyone, there was only a few devotees who were there. Of course, before the Lord appears, he sends some of his confidential servants in order to pave the way for his appearance. So there was a few devotees there. Haridas Thakur was there. We mentioned Advaita Acharya, Mukunda was also there. And even before that, the Lord sent Madhavendra Puri to establish the principle of worship, of devotion, pure devotional service, along with the element of Srimati Radharani's bhakti. So the Lord paved the way by sending a few, but the majority of the population was absorbed in materialistic activities. So Advaita Acharya, he was a Brahmana. He was a respectable Brahmana. And he was thinking, what can I do? But they're not listening. They're not changing. Nothing is doing. So he became quite disturbed. And he was thinking, maybe I should just take out my chakra and finish him off. <laughs> and that way it'll be better off. It's actually better off to, go to, to lose the opportunity to, to enjoy material life than to, to, to enjoy material life. Yeah, sometimes we see that. And a, a person will be put into a difficult situation where they can't enjoy material life because of some situation. And therefore, they have to take to Krishna consciousness. <laughs> It's Krishna's mercy. Or they have to at least refrain from the, what we see, the degrading activities of sense gratification. Because sense gratification goes lower and lower and lower. The more you engage, the more degraded it comes. It's not that it gets better and better. It's just the nature of sense gratification. And so, but then Advaita Charya, this actually is the mission of the Lord. This is the work of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in his compassionate nature, he decided to call the Lord in a very, very emotional way. He, so he came, he went down to the banks of the Ganga and he established the Shalagram Shila and with Tulsi leaves, sandalwood pope, and calling loudly to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, please appear into this world the, these, the living entities which are your children are suffering and only by your presence can they understand what is the value of life. And so he was calling and he was offering also flowers. And he was throwing the flowers into the Ganga. Now, it's interesting, it's described. Those flowers were floating down the Ganga and there was one particular ghat that was connected to the Ganga, and the water would flow through that ghat, and in that ghat was Sachimata, the future mother of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and she was bathing. Now, as described, that because before Lord Chaitanya actually appeared, Sachimata, Jagannath Mishra wanted to have children. And so they prayed, and one after another, a particular young, beautiful little child, a girl, was born. And Sachimata would go to Mother Ganga during that time of the very later part of her pregnancy and worship Mother Ganga for the auspicious birth of the child. But what was happening? This is quite hard to understand, but the flowers that were being offered by Advaita Acharya were floating down to the Ganga, and they were coming upon Mother Sachi's womb, and they would touch her body. And because of that, eight times in a row, after the pregnancy, the child was born, but right after that, the child died. They wanted to speed up the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
So in that, uh, they were very sad. Finally, of course, the ninth child was a boy, Vishwarup, who was a plenary portion of Ananta Sesh, who appeared as the older brother of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, and he appeared in a most interesting way. He wanted to somehow or other inspire people to welcome him in his appearance. And so he created a lunar eclipse. Now everyone knows the lunar eclipse is quite inauspicious. People usually don't come out of the house, people don't eat, they don't cook during those times. And it's all about prayer. Or people go down to the holy rivers and pray, pray, pray for the mercy of the Lord and take bath in the, in the Ganga or, or some holy river. So the Ganga is there in Navadweep and people were going. But when they were going down, they were worshiping before that the different devas. But they understood that now this holy, this lunar eclipse, therefore we should be chanting the names of the Lord. So they started to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. They don't see that as important. It's just something that we do when things get really bad. <laughs> but we also know that simply by being in the material world, that's a disaster. <laughs> a living entity is not meant to take birth in this world, so it's a calamity just to exist in this material world. A living entity belongs with Krishna in the spiritual world. To fall into this material world is an anomaly, it's an anachronism, it's something foreign to the living entity's existence. And because of that, everything inauspicious comes upon the living entity. And Prabhupada would always say, you're suffering, you want to stop suffering. You can't because you have a material body. It's just the way it is. So get rid of the material body, not the way some people think, but actually attain your spiritual body and then one can rise above all suffering and ultimately attain the, the position of the eternal servant of the Lord in the spiritual world. Tato Dehom Purna Janmani Naiti Mameti Sorjuna. Back home, back to God. That is the only goal of life, is to get out of this material existence. <clears throat> and so, in that, uh, in that understanding, now Advaita Chari is calling, and the Lord is arranging. So people were chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 and they were chanting over and over again. And just at the at the pinnacle of the chanting, the Lord, in the year 1486 A.D. 1406, to succumb the year, the Lord appeared in the womb, the from the womb of Mother Sachi. A divine appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And of course it's described in his appearance how beautiful he was and it simply attracted the mind of everyone and all of the neighbors came to see all everyone there was an auspicious ceremony in the house of Sachi Manta. Jagannath Mija and Sachi Manta after undergoing so much Calamities finally had a beautiful, beautiful son. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears in this world to, to fulfill his own desires, to express his own loving relationship as the Supreme Personality of God and in a mood of his devotee of the Lord to taste the loving relationship of that love for himself by his devotee. But for us, he benedicts himself by giving us the ultimate principle, the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. When he was just a little child in the house of Sachi Mata, and some of the ladies from the village would come to see him. Also, Advaita Chari and Haridas Thakur, they had heard about the Lord's appearance. And so, Sachi Devi, Sachi Devi, the, uh, the wife of Advaita Charya, she would come see little Nimai 
He was born under a neem tree. The neem is considered to be auspicious. <clears throat> neem keeps away all the ghosts and hobgoblins and various low spirits. And so he was given the name Nimai. <laughs> now I was just reading yesterday, this is quite strange. The word Nimai means short-lived. Yeah, that's, the, that's another definition of it. How long did Lord Chaitanya stay? He only stayed 48 years. That's not long. But, <clears throat> so auspiciousness and auspiciousness come from the name. Considering, if you consider short life inauspicious, then that's inauspicious. But for some, it's auspicious because they go back home, back to Godhead. <laughs> so, and then Lord Chaitanya he wanted to get everyone to chant. So even as a little boy, when he would, he would cry. And they would try to give him some sweet meats and they would do all kinds of things to, make, to try to entertain the little child. But no matter what they did, he would still cry. And then someone would think, oh, he likes the chanting. And they would start chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. And then he would smile and he would start dancing like that. And sometimes he would fall down. <laughs> they would all laugh and he would laugh also. And then they would stop chanting and then he'd start crying again. <laughs> and then he would st they would start chanting. So he would make sure everyone kept chanting. <laughs> And that's what he's doing to us. So when, when we stop chanting, he makes our life miserable. <laughs> In some way or other. It says if you're always chanting, you're always with Krishna all the time. And you're pleasing Krishna, especially in this age, simply by chanting the holy names of the Lord. With sincerity, with attention, that is the, probably one of the best and most be the best ways to, ch to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the Lord grew up and the first time he actually revealed himself was a nice beautiful pastime when he was three years old in the house of Sachimata and Jagannath Mishra. <clears throat> he was only three years old at the time and during that time uh, one Brahmana he was traveling. He was a very young Brahmana. And he used to worship his deity of Gopal by chanting the six syllable Gopal mantra. And the Gopal mantra has six syllables, it has eight syllables, it has 10 syllables, it has 12 syllables, depending on the extent of the Gopal mantra. So he was chanting the six syllable Gopal mantra every day, and he would worship his deity. Now he had been fasting, and he was also now coming to Navadweep, and he was looking for a place to stay. Where would be a nice Brahminical place that I could stay and perhaps break my fast? So he had heard about the house of Sachimata and Jagannath Mishra, so he came. Jagannath Mishra was so happy to see this very sweet looking young Brahmana. He welcomed him in. Please come, our home is your home. He welcomed him so nicely and said so many sweet words. And he said, my dear Brahmana, how can we serve you? Well, he said, actually, I've been traveling and I've been fasting for three days. I would like to cook and break my fast. I would like to cook for my deity. Please, whatever you need, please instruct us. Yes. So Jagadath Mishra arranged for all the utensils, the ingredients, everything that was needed to cook nicely for his deity. And so he started to cook. And after some time he was finished and he had cooked some rice and some simple vegetables. And now he's placing it in front of the deity and then he starts chanting his Gopal mantra. And while he's chanting the mantra, he's absorbed in chanting. Little Nimai runs out of his place wherever he's coming from and he starts eating the offering. And the, the Brahmana, he says, what is this? The child is stealing the offering. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. What is this? What is this? <laughs> Terrible. 
High means what? Abominable, right? <laughs> it's like the worst thing that could possibly happen. <laughs> and so, he's, uh, and then Jagannath Mishri, he, he, he finds out, oh, so he takes a stick and he starts coming after Nimai. Nimai runs away. <laughs> he's fast. You know? So he hides and Jagannath Mishri can't find him. So he goes back to the Brahman and he says, oh, I'm so, we're so, we're so unhappy that this happened at my house. I welcomed you and now my son has, oh, please, please, we would like you to cook again. We'll make all arrangements. He said, actually, I don't think I should cook again because I think this is Krishna's arrangement for, not, for allowing me not to eat today. So maybe I'll continue. No, no, you're our guest. You must take prasadam. All right. So they arranged more cooking paraphernalia, ingredients, everything. And it took some time, and now he's cooking again. He's cooking and cooking, and finally he finishes, and again he places everything before his deity of Gopal, and then he starts chanting the Gopal Mata Krishnaya Govindaya Gopi Jana Vallabhaya. And he's. Nimai runs out again. <laughs> <laughs> and grabs the offering and he's smiling and he's eating all the rice and he's, his rice is falling all over the place. Hi, hi, what's going on? It's, it, this child, he's done it again. Jagannath Mishra comes running out with this stick and he's running and he's chasing Nimai. Nimai's running this way and that when he runs in the room, closes the door and locks it. Jagannath Mishra comes back and says, Ah, uh, we are so embarrassed. We are so sorry. Oh, how can we make up this? And they, the, the Brahman was so humble. He said, actually, you know, it's, the Lord doesn't want me to eat today. <laughs> no, no, actually, you are a guest. And you said, no, no. And so now he's determined not to, not to cook again. <laughs> Two times. But then something happens. Vishwarup comes and he starts walking into the area. And then the Brahma says, Who's that? <laughs> He's very beautiful. And so, and he starts to speak. My dear Brahmana, you are a guest. We are feeling so unhappy this happened to you. But please, please, one more time, please cook. We will make us happy if you could take prasadam at our house. Uh, Jagannath, he turns to Jagannath Misery. Who's this? Well, that's my older son. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he decides, all right. So now it's getting late. And it's getting later and later, and most of the, the residents of the house are now taking rest. And Jagannath Mishra, he, go, he leaves. And everyone thinks, oh, Nimai is now sleeping. And so the Brahman, he's cooking, he's cooking, he's cooking. And it's getting really late. It's around midnight. He finally finishes. Each time he cooks, it takes him longer because he's getting tired. <laughs> His enthusiasm is not as good as it was the first time. And so now, he's, he's ready to make the offering again. He places his deity there and puts everything in front of the deity. And again, he's chanting his Gopal mantra. And guess what? <laughs> no one else is awake but Nimai. <laughs> so he comes and he starts eating the offering again. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> And then, uh, and then Nimai looks at him, he says, why are you complaining? You're calling me and I'm coming. <laughs> and the Brahmin doesn't know what to think. And then all of a sudden, the whole atmosphere changes. The house is no longer the house of Jagannath Mishra, it's Vaikuntha. It's actually Vrindavan. The whole scene turns into Vrindavan. And there's the chirping of the birds, beautiful flowing of the Jamuna River, the trees, 
and the whole atmosphere is just Sri mm, Vrindavan down. And Krishna is there. Little Nimai is now Krishna playing on his flute, smiling, and looking at the Brahmana <laughs> in a very loving way. And the Brahmana starts, his, and he just, he can't, it's just too much. His heart is overwhelmed with both amazement and transcendental happiness and he, st he loses consciousness, he falls down, he faints. After some time he gets up, the scene is still there. He again sees everything and then he faints again and then he gets up again and he's just overwhelmed. And This went on for some time. The Lord gave him so much mercy. And then he starts singing and dancing and feeling so happy. And then he's singing so loudly and he's just expressing his joy and the residents of the house wake up and they thought, he finally got something to eat. <laughs> That's why he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally the whole scene changes and then little Nimai is back there again. He says to him, you are actually my devotee for many lives. And I knew you were coming. I wanted to give you some special mercy. But what you have seen here, you should not tell anyone. Because my mission has not begun. I have a mission to spread the glories of the worship of Sri Krishna and Vrindavan to the whole world. So please do not say anything what you say. If something, if you do say something, something bad will happen. And that Brahman used to come every day to the house of Jagannath Mishra and play with little Nimai. And sometimes his heart was so expressive because when, when you're feeling happy about something, and you know that same happiness will be experienced by others by sharing what you are feeling happy. You want to share it. But he was thinking, oh, can't say. <laughs> the Lord was. But, and he, he came for three months every day. He was coming to the house and playing with me. And so that was the first time in the past times of the Lord that he revealed himself to who he actually was, to this very special brahmana. And so, and the Lord was always performing his wonderful pastimes just to attract the conditioned souls away from the attachment of the material life. The Lord wants his devotees to become happy and he knows how to make the devotees happy by attracting him with his wonderful pastimes. One time he was playing outside and uh, there was, and he was playing and then there was two thieves in the area. So they came by and they saw, hmm, look at this child. Yeah, we would like to steal this child. So they came up to little Nimai and they offered him some sweetmates and said, oh, little child, you are so nice. We would like to give you a ride. So please come on our back and we will take you on a nice ride and you will be very, very happy. And so little Nimai said, so he got on the back of the thieves and he, they started to go. And they were going to run into their, hide, their hideout and kidnap little Nimai. And so they were running and running and running and going and going. They were thinking they were going to where they were supposed to go. But after some time, they wound up right back in the front of the house of Jagadat Mishra. <laughs> and then as soon as that happened, Jagadat Mishra came out. And they got scared and then they run away. And then, because they were looking for Nimai and Nimai now he's back. And he might said, oh, they was, I got lost and I didn't know where I was going. And these two nice men, they found me and they took me back home. <laughs> <laughs> so he was very merciful. One time, little Nimai, he was, uh, he was playing with some of his friends. And they were out by the bank of the Ganga. And there was a little litter of just newly born puppies. And so they were, all these puppies were there. 
And so there were many. And so the boys were playing with the puppies. So Nimai, he, he took the, the cutest looking puppy out of all of the puppies, and he was playing with that. So the other boys, they got a little unhappy. I want that puppy. <laughs> no, it's my puppy. No, you can't have it. I'm going to keep this puppy. You can have another. No, no, it's my puppy. <laughs> so that way, Nimai got the best puppy. So he took his little puppy and he went home. And uh, his mother said, Nimai, you can't bring that puppy here. Oh, I like my puppy. I love this puppy. No, no, Nimai. I want to play. So his mother didn't know what to do. She said, Nimai, you, you know, you've been playing and you're, you need to take bath. So go home, uh, go take bath, and I'll watch your puppy while you take bath. Okay. Yeah. But make sure you, he stays here. Yes, mother. His mother said yes. Okay. So he went to take bath, and when he came back, his mother took the puppy and, and told the puppy, you could go. <laughs> so the puppy left. And so Nimai said, where's my puppy? I want my puppy. What did you do to my puppy? You took my puppy. I told you not to take my puppy. <laughs> and so he was looking all over. And, and so uh, he couldn't find his puppy. So he was very unhappy. So he went into the town. When he went into the town, that same puppy was there. And the puppy was dancing. <laughs> Somebody was playing some music and the puppy was, was like dancing and they were dancing. The puppy was dancing and it was dancing. I don't know how puppies dance. <laughs> I, if I can go back to my earlier, some of my earlier manifestations in this life on earth, I could probably remember what I was dancing like a puppy. But right now it's a little bit lost to memory. So <laughs> Anyway, and he was dancing and then all of a sudden the puppy just fell over and he died. And right at that time he died, and an airplane came from the spiritual world and took the spiritual body of that puppy and brought it back to Vaikuntha. Simply by the association of little Nimai, when as a child that puppy got liberation. So some people say, well, Lord Chaitanya is merciful. <laughs> Here's an indication of how mercy, what was the qualification of that puppy? Nothing, <laughs> except that the Lord was attracted to that particular puppy. And because of that, that puppy actually attained the spiritual world. How merciful the Lord is. Srila Prabhupada speaks about Chaitanya's mercy. He says, you may have great intelligence, you may have great opportunities to show your intelligence and be rewarded for your great abilities and understandings. And you may be able to do things that many people cannot do. And you may be given great credit for that. And you may have so many good qualities. Then just try to understand, using your intelligence, your abilities, whatever you have, to understand the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And he said, you will never understand. <laughs> no matter how qualified you are, spiritually, materially, no one can understand the mercy of Shaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's so mercy. Prabhupada uses an example of how to understand someone's mercy. He says, I'm with you. <clears throat> You're my friend. So I say, here, here, here is a... Here is some money. And you say, oh, thank you. You're very kind, but you keep it. No, no, I want you to have it. No, 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 you have it. Uh, so I just, you, you won't take it, and I won't refuse you. I won't refuse to give it to you. So I take it, and I push it into your pocket, and I close your pocket so you can't take it out. <laughs> so that's Lord Chaitanya. He's forcing you to take the mercy. And that's how merciful he is. If one shows a little bit of interest of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that interest is enough to get the full mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is so merciful. I'm going to read something that I think is really quite amazing. It's a discussion between Ganga Devi and the personification of the ocean, Samudra. 
So if you could bear with me, I'll read a little bit of, of this discussion between Ganga Devi and Samudra. <clears throat> one day, Samudra, the ocean, addressed Ganga Devi and said, There is no one as fortunate as you in all the three worlds. I offer my repeated obeisances unto those who chant the holy name of Lord Hari while sleeping, eating, walking, standing, or speaking. Everyone will sing, sing about your good fortune. Don't cheat me and speak about my happiness. Samudra replied, so Ganga Devi resp responds by saying that. What are you saying? I, I have to see him. <clears throat> I have to see him in the dress of a sannyasi, which will break my heart. I don't know how I will be able to tolerate that dress of his. For this reason, I have come to take shelter of you under your kindness, because you can show me the pastimes of Nadia and reveal to me Lord Gorachandra, the great, the great dancer whose beauty charms the entire universe. So Samudra, he sees the Lord in Jagannath Puri, when the Lord went to Jagannath Puri and was performing his pastimes in the ocean. And now he's approaching Ganga Devi and saying, how fortunate you are to, to see him, not as a sannyasi, but in, in his beautiful form as Gaurasundra. It is that Gaurasundra who is Purna Brahma, Bhagavan himself, and he will appear in Nadi and perform many sports on your bank. Hearing these words, Janavi, Ganga Devi, sweetly replied to Samudra, saying, To whom shall I tell my miseries? Though at first I will get much pleasure from Prabhu by having his association, later I will get great misery. When Mahaprabhu takes sannyas, he will even go stay by your side. There, with your help, I will see Prabhu in his associations all the time. In this way, they constantly thought about the eminence appearance of Prabhu and became very impatient. And it goes on and on and on. So there's a nice discussion between Samudra. And in this place where this discussion took place, it's called the Samudra Gadi, where Lord our uh, Ganga Devi and Samudra were discussing the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu like that. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as we know, he loved Kirtan. <laughs> I mean, actually, I should go back a little bit earlier in time. When before he became uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was the arrogant scholar in Navadvip. He was so learned in the scriptures and so expert at debating, um, but he would like to defeat others. He had that mood. One time he said to Mukunda, Mukunda was where there walking with the devotees, he said to Mukunda, Mukunda, what is the meaning of liberation? What is the definition of liberation? Mukunda said, liberation means to be free from all the sufferings of the material energy. And Nimai Pandit said, no, no, go home and study your books. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll ask you again tomorrow. <laughs> and make sure you know the answer. <laughs> so he would do that. <laughs> and sometimes he would come to, he would come and challenge the devotees and he would debate with them in various topics, and they would give some answers, and he would defeat their answers. And after he would defeat their answers, he would defeat his own answers that defeated their answers, and reestablish their answers, and then he would say, now defeat that, and they couldn't defeat that, and then he would defeat that and reestablish the other answer he earlier established. <laughs> so in this way, he, and, and all of the, the devotees, they would think, oh, he's so beautiful, and he's so intelligent, but boy, he's so proud. <laughs> <laughs> if he would just become a devotee of Krishna, so many people would also become devotees. 
And then he would say to them, someday I'll become a devotee, you just wait. <laughs> someday I'll become a devotee. So of course, one time he left and went to um, Gaya and he met his uh, spiritual master, Iswar Puri. That's a beautiful story. It's described how he was, the Lord went to, to worship in one Vishnu temple. And while he was worshiping the beautiful form of forearm Vishnu, Ishwar Puri walks into the temple and immediately their eyes locked in devotion to each other. And then Lord Chaitanya, who was still in the mood of Limai Pan, and now he sees his spiritual master, becomes overwhelmed with love. And <coughs> this Ishwar Puri says to Lord Chaitanya, later on we will meet. So that night they came together and Lord Chaitanya fell at the feet of Ishwar Puri and begged to him, you know, the goal of life is actually to attain Krishna and without having a spiritual master, one cannot achieve the goal of life. Tad Vidi, what is that, what is that verse? Tad Vidi, no, 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 no. Tad I forget that verse. One must accept a spiritual man. Tad vigyartam guru abhigatsche. Tad vigyartam guru abhigatsche. One must accept the lotus feet of a spiritual master in order to achieve the goal of life, devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And sometimes people think, well, you know, now, why, has, why should I have anybody in between me and Krishna? <laughs> I have a direct relationship with Krishna. Krishna is in my heart. Why do I need to have someone else to tell me how to worship Krishna? You know, I grew up. My parents were worshiping Krishna. And I know all about Krishna. Yeah, don't tell me anything about Krishna. I don't need any. I, Krishna is there. So, yeah, I'm a devotee of Krishna. But what does Krishna says? You rascal, you need a spiritual master. <laughs> you don't know anything about me. You think you do. <laughs> so, so Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Tad Bidi Patipate Ne Paripasyena Sevaya Upadex Yanti Te Gyan Gyaninas Tattva Darshanaha. That one must do three things. One must approach that person who is qualified to to speak the glories of the Lord and to enlighten others in the process of devotional service. One must be submissive, ask questions, and be ready to offer service. Krishna says that in the Bhagavad Gita. So he establishes how the process by which one can reach him through his bona fide spiritual master. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining how without having a bona fide spiritual master, one cannot achieve the goal of life. And without achieving the goal of life, what is the use of the human form of life? Because the purpose of the human form of life is actually self-realization, atato brahma jigyasa. In this human form of life, self-realization is, is the actual goal of life. <clears throat> and then, Lord Chaitanya starts to glorify Ishwar Puri. And then, of course, the Lord received initiation from Ishwar Puri. When he came back to Navadvip, he was completely different. Now he had lost all of that mood of being the arrogant scholar. Now he was just a humble Vaishnava. And in order to act in that capacity, he would go to the devotees <clears throat> And he would take their clothes that needed washing. He would wash it for them. He would take it, fold it, and give it back to them. He would bring prasadam to the devotees. He would do all kinds of services to devotees, showing by example what it means to actually become a devotee. Gopi Bhattar Bhattar Kamalayor Das Das Anudas. A devotee means to not to be the devotee ultimately in the, in the position of their existence of these an eternal servant of Krishna. But in their activities, they serve the Lord by serving those who serve the Lord. <clears throat> As Krishna says, 
in the Adi Purana, those who say they are my devotee, they're not my devotee. But those who say they're a devotee of my devotee are actually my devotee. So to serve the Lord means to serve those who are serving the Lord. And this is actually the position that attracts the attention of the Lord. Prabhupada gives a very simple example. A rich man, what can you do for a rich man? He has everything. A person who is popular, rich, famous. There's nothing you can give him. But he has a child, and if you do something to please his child, give a little lollipop or some candy or make the child happy in some way, that rich man becomes very inclined to show favor to you because he's happy. You love someone that he loves or show you made someone who he loves happy. And so in the same way, when we serve the devotees of the Lord, we are actually serving the Lord in the best possible way. And Prabhupada, you would make that example a hundred times removed, not just once. Dasa, dasa, anudas, Prabhupada said a hundred times. So Lord Chaitanya was teaching that by his example. He's the supreme personality of Godhead. He doesn't need a guru. He doesn't need to be in the position of offering menial service. But he does, he teaches by example that when, the, as it says, that when a great man does something, common men follow in their footsteps, and then they, they establish principles that become eternal. And those eternal principles, if they're foundation in the relationship with the Supreme Lord, then that is the highest form of understanding. And so, therefore, Lord Chaitanya is teaching very high principles. You need a spiritual master, and you need to serve those who are serving the spiritual master. And this is the this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then, after that, he started to begin kirtan, and then he was performing kirtan in the house of Sri Vastakur. And regularly, he would go to the house of Sri Vastakur and perform kirtan. And at one point, he said to his devotees, he said, you know, every day we're going out and we're performing kirtan in the streets, but what are we doing at night? We're sleeping. <laughs> we're wasting time in this nidra yoga. It's not yoga, it's something. <laughs> it's yoga, it's v-yoga. <laughs> And so he said, we should now, he said to Srivas, perform activities in the house of, of Srivas. So let us meet every night after sundown and we will have kirtan. But this particular kirtan that the Lord in it was inaugurated was not for everyone. It was only for those devotees who were very deep in Krishna consciousness. In other words, his intimate associates. So, because the Lord would go in ecstasy, and if ordinary people were there, or even just devotees who didn't have understanding of the Lord's really internal, understand his mood, they could maybe find fault or criticize because he would go into ecstasies. And ecstasies can never be understood by ordinary people. Even great persons can never understand the ecstasy. And so Mukunda would sing, or Advaita Charya, and then the Lord would dance. And Srivas was given instructions, don't let anyone else come. No one else could come. But one time, one Brahmana, and this was just before the evening, he wanted to come and be part of the kirtan. Now this Brahmana was very austere. He drank only milk. <laughs> that was his whole program. He lived on milk alone, and so he, he was very humble, and he said, oh, I hear, yeah, you know, uh, Chaitanya is going to be doing his kirtan in your house. I would like to come and see. Sriva says, oh, this is not possible. But please, I, you know, I, I'm very austere, and, you know, I worship the Lord, and I drink only milk. <laughs> And Shivas was somewhat, his mind was inclined. So he, he said, all right, you can come, but you have to hide. If Lord Chaitanya finds out, he will become very unhappy. So he, he hid the Brahmana, 
and Lord Chaitanya, he's there, and the kirtan starts and the Lord starts to dance. And after a few moments he stops and he thinks, something's wrong. There's somebody here that doesn't belong here. So the kirtan begins again, and again after a few moments he stops. So he, and now he's really concerned, so he goes to Srivast. Srivast, is there someone in this house who does not belong here? And Srivast says, well, you know, it's just your associates, but since you asked, there is one Brahmana, and he's very simple. He drinks only milk. Lord Chaitanya became angry and said, get him out of here right now. And so the Brahmana, when he heard, he ran and he fell at the feet of Lord Chaitanya and offered nice prayers. And then he got up and the Lord Chaitanya said, do you think that you can get Krishna simply by drinking milk? <laughs> and then he started to speak in so many different ways and then he, the Brahmana could understand, I have to leave. So he left and he was leaving. As he was leaving, he was thinking, hmm, I did see Lord Chaitanya dance for some time. And so when he, he actually felt happy that he got chastised by the Lord. This is important. Sometimes we think, yeah, we should get praised, we should get all kinds of honors, and if my guru or somebody in the position who is my teacher chastises me, I feel unhappy. But usually chastising from someone who cares about you, not someone who doesn't care about you, you don't care about that guy. <laughs> For someone who cares about you, it's good. It's meant for your upliftment. It's meant for your purification. It's meant to teach you something. And so, this Brahmana, he was feeling happy. And as soon as he started to feel happy, and at the same time he felt grateful for the opportunity to have, to see Lord Chaitanya's dancing, the Lord called him back. <laughs> And he said, and he came back again, he fell at the feet of the Lord. The Lord said, you know, just give up this drinking of milk and come and, <laughs> you may come and associate with the devotees in Kirtan. And so he did. So Lord Chaitanya was very merciful. And as many have pastimes in the house of Srivas Thakur, Srivas, Srivas' mother-in-law, she also came one time and tried to hide and see Lord Chaitanya's dancing. And again, Lord Chaitanya, when he was dancing and dancing, and sometimes he, he'd stop again and he said to Srivas, Srivas, somebody's here. No, there's nobody here. You sure? Yeah, we're only those that you said could come. No, there's somebody I know. Let's look. So they found hiding behind this big earthen pot, it was a big urn, and it was Srivas Thakur's mother-in-law. And so Srivas Thakur always wanted to please Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now we like mother-in-laws, they're okay. You know. <laughs> there was a rock and roll sing song that when I grew up, when I was a kid, I don't know if this is appropriate for this lecture, but it was a rock and roll song that I used to, I used to hear it all the time. Should I sing it? <laughs> no. It goes, mother-in-law, 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 the worst person I know, mother-in-law, mother-in-law. She worries me so, mother-in-law. <laughs> so cut that out of the tape anyway. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes mother-in-laws are not given much credit. <laughs> anyway, we still like mother-in-laws because they're spirit souls too. <laughs> Obviously. And so Srivas Thakur didn't even think twice and he removed his mother-in-law. He wanted to make Chaitanya Mahaprabhu happy. And now, and so when there was another incident where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing and Srivas had a little son. The son was about four years old. The boy was quite sick. He had come down with some very strong, high, very high fever. And now he was in the back room with all of the relatives in the house. 
and the boy's fever was becoming higher and higher and looked like he was not going to live. So at one point, the boy actually left his body. And when that happened, all of the relatives, they started to feel very sad and they started to express their sadness, they started to cry. And now their crying was becoming a little loud. So Sri Vastakur came back to see what was happening and he said, what is happening? They said, oh, your son, he has left, he's passed away. Yeah, but don't cry so loud. <laughs> You're going to disturb Lord Chaitanya's dancing. And then he, so he left. And so Lord Chaitanya continued to dance and he was dancing and dancing. And now it's practically the next morning. And it's just before sunrise and Lord Chaitanya stops his dancing and he calls Srivas over and he says, Srivas, I have a feeling something went wrong today, this evening. Srivas said, what could, what could go wrong? You're here. <laughs> because you are here, everything is auspicious. No, no, I feel something is wrong. Well, since you mentioned it, my Lord, my son, oh, really? When did he... He died about seven and a half hours. Why didn't you tell me? So take me. So he went back to the room where the boy was there, and the boy was laying there, and the relatives were still grieving. And Lord Chaitanya went right up to the boy, placed his hand on the boy's chest, and he said, My dear beloved son of Srivas, where did you go? And then he rose up, came back from the dead. He looked around. Everybody was amazed. He's back. And then he said, the boy started to speak. He said, my dear Lord, I'm your eternal servant. And my time in this body is finished. And by your will, I have go I'm going on to my next destination. And he laid back, back down again, and he died. <laughs> and so, when everyone saw that, they become a little bit pacified. And Srivas Thakur, uh, Lord Chaitanya said to Srivas Thakur, Srivas Thakur, your love for me is the, is the most beautiful. Therefore, I can never, ever, ever leave you. He said something mysterious when he said that. And then he said, please arrange for the last rites and I will accompany. So they took the body down to the banks of the Ganga and Lord Chaitanya personally with his own hands performed the last rites for the departed soul of Srivas' son. Just to show his love for Srivas, he did the ceremony himself. Now when Lord Chaitanya said, I could never leave you, everybody was bewildered. Why is he saying that? Does he have some plan to leave? But that was the first time he indicated that soon he would be leaving Navadweep and going on to take the sannyas order. The second incident that, that is aligned with that is one day Lord Chaitanya was on, walking along the banks of the Ganga and there was one brahmana there. He was, he was a nice brahmana, but he was a little bit upset because he wanted to get into the house of Srivas Thakur and become part of Lord Chaitanya's dancing program. But they wouldn't let him in. So he became a little angry. And he was a Brahmana and he was refused. So when he saw Lord Chaitanya, he said, I wanted to come in and say, I'm a Brahmana. And they, well, you wouldn't let me in. I don't know what you're doing in there, but you, because I'm a respectable person, you would not let me in. Therefore, I'm going to curse you. And took out his Brahmin thread and he snapped his thread. I curse you that you will never enjoy material happiness. The Lord started to dance. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that blessing. And then the Brahmin said, what did I say? <laughs> No, no, you can't change it. You said it, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. And no more material happiness. <laughs> and then that was the second incident that indicated that the Lord would eventually take to the sannyas order of life. 
Well, there are many wonderful pastimes. <laughs> of course, the, the pastimes are unlimited. I'll tell a few pastimes of the Lord because just to hear about the Lord's pastimes are just so sweet. Um, Advaita Charya, he, he never wanted to, he wanted to honor Lord Chaitanya as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But the Lord wouldn't let him do it. And he was very strong about that. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one of his missions was, or one of, part of his mission was to remain in the mood of a devotee of the Lord and never be honored or be glorified as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Why? Because so many people at that time were claiming to be incarnations of the Lord or the Lord himself, some aspect of the Godhead. We see that even today, it still goes on. Somebody becomes very powerful, develops some mystic power, gets, gets a few followers, has a dream, and now they're a Bhagavan, but they still have to go to the doctors when they get sick. <laughs> this, is, this is Bhagavan. <laughs> Today's modern day Bhagavans. Anyway, so this was very strong at that time. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in order to teach that the living entity is not the Supreme, even though he was the Supreme, he refused to be called or honored as the Supreme Personality of God. He wanted to teach that, which is very important because uh, this is the greatest, as Prabhupada said, this is the greatest cheating in the world today. If, if a policeman, yeah, a policeman is a person who's supposed to give you protection, some help. But if a thief dresses up as a policeman and he looks like a policeman, but he's actually a thief, he's going to act in a different way, although he appears in one way, another way. He appears as someone to help, but he's actually someone to cause difficulty. So when people pretentiously or surreptitiously or even cheatingly manifest themselves or claim to be the Supreme Lord, they actually cheat people. It's the greatest cheating that goes on. And even today we see there are so many so-called swamis and yogis who like to, you know, present themselves as being Bhagavan or an incarnation or maybe Lord Shiva or somebody. <laughs> but as Prabhupada said, they're all cheaters. Unless you find that in the scriptures, nor the Supreme Personality of Godhead is given authority by a scripture, not by someone's declaration like that. If it's not in the scriptures, then it is cheating. And so Lord Chaitanya was very strong about being called that. So Advaita Charya, he wanted to worship the Lord as the Lord. So one time the devotees were having kirtan, so he said to the devotees, now we're going to have a special kirtan. We're going to chant Gauranga. We're going to chant Gauranga. We're not going to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> we're going to chant Gauranga. And the devotees were thinking, oh boy, this is, uh, Lord's not going to like this. But he wasn't there. Lord Chaitanya wasn't there at the time. So, and Tvaitacharya was very enthusiastic. So he said, come on, we're going to chant, go runga, go runga, go runga, go runga, go runga, go runga, go runga. So they were, so, all right, so he got all the devotees going. So they're chanting, Go Ranga, Go Ranga, Go Ranga, Go Ranga. Go Ranga, Go Ranga, Go Ranga, Go Ranga. Go Ranga. Goranga, Goranga, Goranga. Jaya Satchinandana, Jaya Satchinandana. Jaya Satchinandana, Jaya Satchinandana. Jaya 
Nithai Gorang Jaya Nithai Gorang Gharda Gorang 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 So they were chanting and dancing and singing Gauranga, and then Lord Chaitanya from a distance, he's hearing. Wow, Kirtan. Okay, I'm glad. he starts getting closer, and then he starts getting really close, and he says, what are they chanting? <laughs> They're not chanting Krishna's name. So he comes, and then they see him, and then they stop, and then the Dvaita Charya says, no, come on, chant, chant more, Gauranga, 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 and so he's getting everybody, uh, so they don't know what to do. <laughs> so, and Lord Chaitanya just turns around, and he walks away, goes back in his room, and closes the door and goes to sleep. <laughs> and after some time, he gets up, and Srivas is there. And he says to Srivas, why don't the devotees chant Krishna's name? Why are they chanting this other? And Srivas goes like this, puts his hand up. That's out, it's during the day. And he's putting his hand in the direction of the sun. And uh, Lord Chaitanya says, what are you doing? I'm blocking the sun. <laughs> You're blocking the sun with your hand? You can't do that. That's true, my Lord. Nor can you hide from us. <laughs> you are like the sun, and therefore you, you cannot hide. <laughs> The Lord Chaitanya remained quiet. <laughs> he didn't say anything and just walked away. Another time, Lord Chaitanya said to Srivas, Srivas, you know, you got a big family, so many, all together, but you don't have any occupation. How do you live? How do you supply food for the family? What's your secret? Srivas went, <laughs> clapped three times. And Lord Chaitanya said, what does that mean? Well, my Lord, one time, if the Lord doesn't feed me, one day, two days, if he doesn't feed me and my family, takes care of us, Three days, if he ne neglects us, I drown myself in the Ganga. Lord Chaitanya became so happy and he roared so loudly. I'm not going to try that. <laughs> but he roared so loudly and he said, Shrivas, that core, even if the goddess of fortune Lakshmi has to go with a begging bowl from door to door to beg alms, there will always be food in your house. Ah. He, he wanted to show that anyone who worships the Lord, the Lord will take care of that devotee. So I tell that sometimes to other people and they say, does that mean I should quit my job? I say, yeah. <laughs> Only if you have that faith. Because <laughs> if you don't have that faith, it doesn't work. <laughs> but if you have faith that simply by worshiping the Lord, the Lord will take care, and you have that faith completely, it works. <laughs> because it's the faith that works. It's not anything else. If you have complete faith in the Lord, that I've simply worshiped the Lord, and my life is simply centered around worshiping the Lord and serving the devotees, there's no loss. There's no loss. And so this is, the Lord is very kind and very inclined to serve his devotees who have complete dedication to his lotus feet and devotion. One time, and this is, well, after the Lord went to Jagannath Puri, of course, then there's, I'm skipping some other smaller pastimes in between. But before the Lord went to Jagannath Puri, when the devotees in Navadvip found out that the Lord was actually, actually, he had taken sannyas and now he wanted to go 
to Vrindavan. He actually wanted to go to Vrindavan. And so um, the Lord made his way towards Vrindavan and he stopped at the Ganga to bathe. But the Lord was in ecstasy thinking that it was the actual Jamuna. So he was bathing there. And while he was bathing, thinking he was a Jamuna, Advaita Charya came with a boat and said, my dear Lord, here's some dry clothes after you get done with your bag. And he said, the Lord said to Advaita, what are you doing in Vrindavan? How did you get here? <laughs> Advaita said, this is not Vrindavan, this is, Sh this is Shantipur, and you're bathing in the Ganga in Shantipur. But actually, wherever you are, it's Vrindavan. <laughs> So you're right, it is Vrindavan. And then the Lord, you know, came and then Advaita invited him to a house for some prasadam. So they were there. And the Lord, he, Advaita and his family had cooked this big feast to honor uh, Lord Chaitanya and welcome him. And so the Lord said, well, I'm, you know, I'm just going to eat a little bit of simple vegetables. Just give me a little vegetables. And... Advaitis Charya said, No, we've cooked this wonderful feast for you. I can't eat this. Advaita said, Every day in Jagannath Puri, you're eating 52 times and you're eating much more each time. So for this, this is just a small little snack. <laughs> Something like that, he said. So for this is nothing. So the Lord started to honor Prashadam. Now Nityananda was also there. He was accompanying the Lord. And then uh, Nityananda said to Advaita, Advaita, you know, I've been fasting for three days. And now I came and I was wanting to get some Prashadam. And this is all I get. There's nothing here. I'm going to have to continue to fast. <laughs> and so they started to argue. And Advaita said to her, you know, you're just a reject Paramahansa. <laughs> And, 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 they, and they start calling each other names, you know. <laughs> you're just a, just you're just a controlled householder, you know, <laughs> something like. That. So they were arguing back and forth. So Nityananda got it. He took some rice and he threw it, and then some of the grains bounced up and hit Lord, the the the, the leg of Advaita Chari, and when the rice hit the leg of Advaita Chari, it stuck there, and he felt ecstasy being hit by the thrown rice of Lord Dityananda, he started to dance. <laughs> he started to dance. So this is an interesting pastime. No one really knows, really, what was going on between the two of them. And it says that anyone who takes the side of one or the other, when two great personalities get into an argument over something spiritual, if you take one side of the other, you get defeated, you, you, get, you get actually you get condemned because you don't know what is actually going on. Sometimes there is some leela there between the two of them and you can't see that. So better to remain neutral. <laughs> so now the Lord actually agreed on the request of Advaita Charya to remain in the house of Advaita Charya for some time and accept prasadam every day and to perform kirtan with the devotees before he made his way to Jagannath Puri. So he stayed there for many, many days. <clears throat> and at that time, the devotees from Navadweep, along with Sachi Mata, came to see the to, to see the Lord. And Sachi Mata was so happy to see uh, the Lord again. He had left Navadweep, and he has left his beautiful wife's uh, Vishnu Priya and his mother. And now Vishnu Priya, she stayed, but Sachi Mata came. And Sachi Mata said to Advaita, I want to cook while he's here. And so she was cooking every day. And she said to her son, actually, you know, you're going to Vrindavan. I will never see you again. And if I never see you again, and there's no way I can keep my life. So actually Vrindavan and Jagannath Puri are two rooms in the same house. So please, make your residence in Jagannath Puri. That way we will have a chance to come and see you every year during the Ratha Yatra. And the Lord agreed. 
he actually agreed on the request of his mother to make his residence in Jagannath Puri rather than go to Vrindavan just to please his mother. <clears throat> of course, that's one of the reasons. And then after one month, <clears throat> the Lord wanted to leave and he decided to leave. But Dvaita Acharya would not let him leave. And then uh, he started to follow. And he said to Advaita, you're following me? Yes, we don't want you to leave. Because if you leave, there's no, there's no future for us. Our lives are completely lost. So he pleaded and begged the Lord to come back and stay for a few more days. And the Lord stayed for five more days. And then in that time, they were having kirtan every night. And Prabhupada writes in one of the purports in that same section describing this leela, that in the house of Advaita Charya, three things went on. Harikata, chanting the glories of the Lord in his pastimes. Harikirtan, kirtan, and Hari Puja. Word, worshiping the Lord, three things. And Prabhupada writes in the purport, describing that pastime, he said, these are the three activities of the Vaishnavas. Harikata, Hari Kirtan, and Hari Puja. There is nothing else. And he <clears throat> and Prabhupada writes in that purport, and he says, now we should establish in all our temples throughout the entire ISKCON society, three hours of Kirtan every night in every one of our centers. Prabhupada writes that. Every one of our centers, he gives that instruction in the Chaitanya Charita that every temple should have kirtan every night for three hours. <laughs> because that's Lord Chaitanya's mood. And we're worship, we are worshipers of Lord Chaitanya. We worship Krishna by worshiping Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because by worshiping Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are worshiping Krishna. And we're also pleasing Lord Chaitanya, which means he opens up the door to Radha Krishna's worship in Vrindavan. There were many wonderful pastimes when the Lord was in Jagannath Puri. <clears throat> and one year when during the Ratha Yatra, and this was the time when King Pachapuruta was the king of Jagannath Puri, and he was also a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya. And he always wanted the association of Lord Chaitanya. And he made his request to the devotees that I want to associate with Lord Chaitanya. I want, I want to just get his darshan just once. But the Lord would not allow it. He said because he is engaged in material affairs for a sannyasi to associate with people who are engaged in pounds, shilling, and pence is worse than drinking poison willing. He quotes that one verse. <clears throat> that sim that, <clears throat> that by associating with materialistic persons in the activities of material life, it is worse than drinking poison willing for one who is seriously engaged in devotional service. And so he refused. He wouldn't allow Lord, uh, Adwait, uh, he wouldn't allow um, King Pratibharudra. But the devotees knew how much Pratibharudra won, and they also knew he was such a dedicated devotee of the Lord. So they were trying in different ways. The Lord actually said, if you continue to try to encourage me in that way, you will not see me here again. So they remained quiet. <laughs> they became scared. So but Lord Nityananda had a plan. So he told the devotees, tell the king to send um, his son. So the son is the representative of the father. So the boy came. And the boy was so much like Krishna. <laughs> he was so beautiful. He actually had very similar features of Sri Krishna. And when Lord Chaitanya met the boy who came on behalf of his father, he said, oh, this boy looks just like Krishna. <laughs> He's so nice. And so he showed his affection for his, the, the son of King Prajaburudra. But that's the closest thing he could. But still, King Prajaburudra still wanted to get so the devotees said, why don't you send a garment, a garment, one of your uh, gar garments to, uh, 
from Lord Chaitanya to King Prajaparuta, he will be very happy. So the Lord agreed. He took off one of his garments and gave it to King Prajaparuta. But he would never... But still, the devotees wanted it, and King Prataparuta wanted it. So when the when the when the Rathayatra came, and the Lord was beginning to dance in Kirtan, the Lord separated the devotees into seven different groups, and they were dancing in front and all around the Jagannath cart. And the Lord was dancing in front of the Jagannath cart, and. Uh, and the dancing was going on, and each in every group there was a lead singer and a lead dancer, and there were seven groups. And uh, the Lord performed something very transcendental, transcendentally mystical. He started to dance, and every group thought that Lord Chaitanya was present in his in that particular group. So every devote group was thinking, "Wow." We get the association of Lord Chaitanya, but he was simultaneously in all seven groups, dancing and chanting, and they were all feeling happy. And two people, actually three, but two, may, two people could see that. One was Lord Nityananda, the other one was Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, who was with King Prataparudra. And King Prataparuja was given special vision by the Lord to see that mystical dance by the Lord. And he, he could actually see the Lord dancing in the seven different groups simultaneously. The Lord got tired <clears throat> after dancing and the Rathayatra was reaching its end. So the Lord decided to take a little rest and he went to the Jagannath Vallabha Gardens and he sat down there and at that time the devotees arranged for King Prataparudra to meet. They said, "You can now, here's your chance to actually get the association of the Lord but you cannot go in those garments. You have to down some simple cloth. So he took all his off his royal garments and put on some simple dress and he went and the Lord was there. He was laying down and he was tired. And he was still in ecstasy of the kirtan. So King Prataparudra came and he started to massage the legs of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he was massaging and massaging. And then uh, King Prataparudra recited that verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam where the gopis tapakatam ritam taptajivanam Thank you. There is the glories of the Lord are spread throughout the world by those who sacrifice everything to, to give that mercy to others. Such persons are considered the most worshipful, sung by the gopis. That's the essence of the verse. When the Lord Chaitanya heard that verse sung, he said, Who are you? <laughs> and King Prataruddha said, I am, your, I am the servant of the servant of the servant of your servants. And he presented himself in that way. He, although he was such a powerful and such a respectable king who had such influence, he became like a very simple, humble devotee. And uh, he pleased the Lord by his, by coming in that way. And uh, therefore the, he received the mercy of the Lord. He had already received the mercy of the Lord, but now he got the association of the Lord. Yeah. Well, these are some of the wonderful pastimes. I can't see the clock. What time is it? Hmm? 11.05. Okay. Hmm. Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda were in... Actually, Lord Nityananda had come to see Lord Chaitanya in, in Jagannath Puri. 
And Jagannath, Lord Chaitanya told Lord Nityananda, you, you stay in, in, in Navadweep and you preach there and, and I will be, you, you spread the glories of the Harinam Sankirtan there and I'll spread the glories here. And so, you know, but Lord Nityananda couldn't take, bear the separation. So one year he came to see Lord Chaitanya during the festival. And they were talking, they were together, they were so happy to be with each other. But at one point, Lord Chaitanya told Lord Nityananda, well, you're here, and you should, be, you should go back to Navadweep. And so Lord Nityananda said, and he took the instructions on his head, and he, the Lord Chaitanya said, take your gopals and go back. So this pastime centers around Lord Nityananda, but I'll tell it anyway. <laughs> so it's, you can't separate the two, right? Lord Nityananda and Lord Nityananda. Anyone who tries to separate them will become destroyed. <laughs> it's not possible. That's what happened to the brother of Krishna Das Kaviraj. He accepted Lord Chaitanya, but he couldn't accept Lord Nityananda. And he found fault with Lord Nityananda because of that. What was that devotee who he, he was, what was his, huh? Miniketa Ramdas, yeah, yeah. He, he became angry and he just broke his, his stick and he cursed the brother of Lord Krishna Das Kaviraj and he fell down. So one who slights one and, and tries to, you know, glorify the other will be slighted by both. <laughs> And so, Lord Nityananda took the, the instruction on his head and he gathered his gopals and they started to go towards Navadweep. And they were chanting and dancing and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and more. And this much more, but that's that's the essence. <laughs> and then they got lost. They didn't know where they were going. <laughs> so where would we go? I don't know. Where you? Well, you should ask somebody. So they asked some of the villagers, where, which way is it not? Oh, hi, hi. You have to go six miles that way and take the road. And, okay, so they changed directions, got on the road and started going and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and doesn't there's no difference between the two. Chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting. So there's some people who like to chant but don't dance, right? And some people like to dance so much they forget to chant. <laughs> no, <laughs> not like that. Put them together and they go together. So when you chant, you dance, and when you dance, you chant more. <laughs> That's the idea. And so they got lost again. Oh, so we should get some Directions again, so again they got directions and hi, hi, 20 miles that way, go follow the Ganga and it leads you to Navadweep. So they did it. They, and they finally they got to the area of Navadweep. They came to the house of, of Raghava Pandit. And Raghava Pandit greeted Lord Nityananda and all his gopals and he came out with a garland. They put the garland on and Lord Nityananda said, do you have a garland of kadamba flowers? Well, Nittai, this is not the season. Go look in your backyard and see what you can find. So he goes in his backyard and on the lemon tree there was some kadamba flowers. <laughs> so he, was, he picked the flowers, made a nice garland, brought it out and Lord Nityananda was happy. Lord Nityananda likes kadamba flowers and then everyone's smell started to smell damanaka flowers. Now, Dhammanaka flowers, Lord Chaitanya would always wear a Dhammanaka flower garment. And, but Lord Chaitanya wasn't there, but he was there, and they couldn't see him. Because Dhammanaka flowers only grow in the area of Jagannath Puri. And now they're in Navadweep. <clears throat> and so everyone was thinking, not everyone, a few people, maybe Lord Chaitanya is also here, but actually a few people could actually see. Because it says, whatever Lord Nityananda, Lord Nityananda has his kirtan, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is personally present in that kirtan. Yeah. 
They can never be separated. And so now the kirtan starts up again and Lord Nityananda with all his gopals and they chanted and danced, they danced and chanted for three months straight. It's described by Vrindavan Das Thakur and Chaitanya Bhagavat that the kirtan went on for three full months and the devotees were in ecstasy. <laughs> And they were running up the side of the tree, dancing on the branches, going all the way out to the ends of the twigs, and dancing on the twigs of the branches of the tree. And nothing was falling. Everybody was dancing. It was like a, you know, some kind of special energy that was flying through the air. And everyone, and people were dancing off the tree and jumping and saying, "I am Angada, the monkey soldier." Boom! <clears throat> dive off the tree and. It, and then they were dancing and then they would come to trees and they would dance with the trees and pull the trees out of the ground. They were small trees. And they would dance with them and then the villagers realized something wonderful was happening so they also came and the kids from the village came and they started to join the kirtan. And they danced for one month. Nobody ate, nobody drank and it was just so exciting. And some of the, even the little kids were picking up trees and dancing with them. So that's Lord Nityananda's kirtan. <laughs> you can't imagine when Lord Nityananda has a kirtan. It's just, it's not part of this world. So, and then of course, Lord Nityananda went on to perform his pastimes in Navadvipta. Hmm. There's a beautiful verse that illustrates Lord Chaitanya's mission. I'm going to read that verse. Let me see if I can find it here. I printed out a hundred pieces of paper here, and I haven't read one of them yet. <laughs> it looks good. Anyway, let's see. What is the ph philosophy of Lord Chaitanya? Lord Chaitanya says, Aradyo Bhagavan Vrijay Satanya Tadharma Vrindavan Ramya Kashyupasanam Rajavadu Varga Varvirya Kalpita Srimad Bhagavatam Amalam Purana Prema Pumarta Maha Sri Chaitanya Maha Prabhu Mato Idam Tada Dara Na Paraha. This is from his Chaitanya Manjusa. It's a very rare scripture, you don't hear much from that. The philosophy of Lord Chaitanya is that Krishna is the only object of worship. And as Krishna is the object of worship, similarly his place Vrindavan, Vrindavan Dham. Those who have visited India, Vrindavan Dham, still, if you go to Vrindavan without knowing about Krishna, you will at once feel Krishna consciousness. Such a nice place. So that is Vrindavan Dham. It is also worshipable. And Ramya Kasya Upasanam Rajavadu Varga Viya Kalpita. Now, Krishna was worshipped by the damsels of Rajadam. Lord Chaitanya recommends that is the highest, topmost grade of worship because that was pure love. The damsels of Raj loved Krishna so much without any return. That's sublime thing. So he recommended this is the highest form of worship. Ramya Kasya Upasanam Vrajavadu Varga Vira Kalpita, Srimad Bhagavatam Amalam Paranam. And Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless Vedic literature because Srimad Bhagavatam is full of Krishna consciousness not only. That's all. This is Prabhupada speaking. Just like this, Bhagavad Gita is full of Krishna consciousness. It is a preliminary study of Srimad Bhagavatam. The last word in Srimad Bhagavad Gita is that sarva dharmam pradiksha jam mammekam saranam brajam. You give up everything. Just surrender to me, Krishna says. One who accepts this philosophy, I accept Krishna as Vasudeva sarvam iti samahatma sadurlabhaham. Then for him, Srimad Bhagavatam is the postgraduate study. So in other words, one who surrenders to Krishna, then one can uh, uh, engage in devotional service through the process of the principles given by Srimad Bhagavatam. And 
Srimad Bhagavatam Amalam Puranam Prema Pumartha Mahan. <clears throat> now we are searching, we are searching our self interest. Everyone is busy with his own interests, but people do not know what is their real interest. They do not know what is their real interest. Their real interest is to invoke dormant love of Krishna. That is my real interest. That dormant love of Krishna is there in every one of you. So in a very succinct and summarization, using that verse from Chaitanya Manjusa, Srila Prabhupada sums everything up, there's these four points. That Krishna is the worshipable object, that there's no difference between Krishna and his dham. The highest form of worship is the damsels of Raja, and all, all of that is taught in Sri, in Sri, Sri Mad Bhagavatam, which is the Amalam Puranam, the pure and spotless Puranam that teaches only unalloyed devotion to Krishna. And those who worship Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will also understand that these are the principles that he taught. These are his essential principles. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And the Lord Chaitanya in his final pastimes in, in Jagannath Puri, he was more or less going into the mood of internal love for Krishna. And he would very seldom exhibit those symptoms only with his most confidential devotees, Ramananda Roy, and uh, Srub Damodar Goswami and those final pastimes and the Lord would engage in kirtan he absorbed himself more and more in kirtan in ecstasy of kirtan and it's explained that one time when he was performing kirtan in the tempi of Sota Gopinath in Jagannath Puri, the devotees were dancing and dancing and chanting and Lord Chaitanya was in ecstasy. But at one point, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared no longer in the kirtan. And, but it wasn't for a while that the devotees actually understand that Lord Chaitanya was no longer personally present. And so when they got to that realization that he was not there, another realization came. And it was like a thunderbolt that struck the heart and minds of every devotee. They understood he's gone. <laughs> if you go to Jagannath Puri in the temple of Gopinath, and there is the beautiful deity of Gopinath. That deity was worshipped by Gadadhar Pandit. Gadadhar Pandit is actually a manifestation of Sri Rati Radharani and a very sweet manifestation of her love for Krishna. When Radharani's love in Vrindavan was a mixture of sweetness and anger sometimes because one time Radharani was there and Krishna had promised to meet Radharani but she, he didn't come. And she's waiting and waiting and waiting. And he still didn't come. And Lalita comes and said, My dear Radha, he's not coming. I know. Why, where is he? I'll go find him. So Lalita, she's good. She goes to the place where the uh, 
competitors of uh, Radharani, the followers of Chandravali, and Krishna is one of, is one of with one of the gopis there. And she says, oh, you rascal. You were supposed to meet my master, and now you're here. You are a rascal. And she becomes angry and leaves. She runs back to tell Radharani. Now Krishna's call. He doesn't know what to do. So he tries to, 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 to smooth over the whole thing. So he comes running, and he comes where Radharani is. And as soon as she sees him, she says, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> and he's trying so many ways to, to explain what happened, but she doesn't want to hear anything. And so now she's completely in man. And she's just angry. She doesn't talk to him. And then she goes home and she takes her blue sari and throws it because it's blue. It reminds her of Krishna. <laughs> And then she takes her birdcage, which is also blue, and throws it away. <laughs> and then she says, don't let me see the Jamuna because it's blue. <laughs> so she don't want nothing to do with Krishna. And now Krishna's thinking, what am I going to do? Radharani's so angry with me. And uh, so he's trying to, so he, and she's not changing. She's, she's fixed. <laughs> she's in her mind, and it's not changing. So Krishna goes to Vrinda Devi because Vrinda Devi, she's the CEO under the command of Purnamasi. More Purnamasi is Yoga Maya, and she's in charge of all of the leelas, and and she makes all of the leelas happen by her mystic power, her Yoga Maya potency. And uh, Vrinda Devi is her assistant. So Krishna goes to Vrindan Devi and said, you got to have help me. i got to get back with Radharani. Hmm, yeah, it's a problem. What to do? Hmm. Well, let me think of something. Oh, all right, I have an idea. You know, um, Radharani's been quite sad lately. So I, you should dress up as a fortune teller and go to Radharani and, and uh, come and say you would like to uh, give her some... Uh, guidance in her sadness. You are an expert fortune teller. Okay. And so they dress Krishna up as a gopi. And he looks, you know, he looks quite feminine because <laughs> he's beautiful. <laughs> and so he goes. And so he's there. Radharani's there with some of her gopi friends. And oh, who's this new gopi? We never saw her before. And oh, yeah, so I'm an astrologer. I heard about Radharani's unhappiness. I've come to find out where her good fortune lies. Oh, okay. And so she goes to Radharani. He goes to Radharani in the form of she. <laughs> and he starts taking, he starts uh, looking at the bottom of her feet to tell her, you know. And he says, well, actually, mm, I understand the situation. And your good fortune lies in forgiving Krishna and taking him <laughs> And she says, she, she turns to her friends, who's this rascal? Get, get her out of here. She doesn't know anything. <laughs> and Radharani becomes even more in her mind. So Krishna's defeated. He doesn't know what to do. He runs back to Vrinda Devi. Come on, help me out. This that didn't work. You got another plan? Yeah, well, we're pledged, plan two. All right, Ra Radharani, she's very inclined to holy man, so dress up as a sannyasi. <laughs> All right, so he, so she becomes, he becomes dresses up as sannyasi, and he's got his, you know, he's got his sannyasi. He was actually kind of look, he looked a little bit like Lord Shiva because he's wearing a, you know, a tiger skin. And he's got a little drum too. <laughs> And he comes and he, oh, bakshish, bakshish, Radharani's there, bakshish, you know. I said, oh, a sannyasi, we have to honor a sannyasi. Oh, my dear sannyasi, how can we serve you? Oh, yes, I have a request. What is that? Please forgive Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> then Radharani understands you can't say no to a sannyasi. <laughs> No, it's not my fault I said that. That uh, has nothing to do with me. So, <laughs> so anyway, 
so Radharani, she, she, she displays this contrary mood to Krishna sometimes. But as when in Gadadhar, Gadadhar was always very obedient, very sweet, very loving, very, very everything to, to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So she was in a different mood in that particular manifestation as an appearance at Gadadhar Pandit. So Gadadhar Pandit would worship that deity uh, of, uh, and therefore Lord Chaitanya very much inclined to, Gadad, to give Gadadhar Pandit. So he disappeared by entering into the deity of Tota Gopinath. And if you go to that particular temple, you will see there's a mark on the leg of, uh, on the right leg of that deity, and it says that that's where the Lord entered and he disappeared from the world. When the devotees found that, they couldn't find him everywhere. There was such unhappiness. Others say that he, he, he came to Jagannath Puri and, and merged into the body of Lord Jagannath. That's another that is somewhat accepted in some circles. There's a third reason that he walked into the ocean and disappeared. That one, in that particular episode, we don't accept at all. But the one we do accept is that the Lord disappeared to show his love for Gadadhar Pandit by merging into the deity, which was the worshipable deity of Gadadhar Pandit. One time, <clears throat> Gadadhar Pandit was, uh, was given some beautiful rice and Lord Chaitanya was, came to see Gadadhar Pandit. So Gadadhar Pandit was cooking. And he was cooking, 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 and he was cooking so nicely. And Lord Chaitanya came. And, uh, and then he had finished cooking and he said, Oh, Gadadhar Pandit. And he had worshipped, he had offered that rice to the deity of, uh, of Tota Gopinath. And the Lord said, Oh, my dear Gadadhar Pandit, when you cook, it is so wonderful. And now it is offered to Gopinath. So this rice is actually coming from the spiritual world. And so and the Lord received the rice cooked by Gadadhar Pandit. He was so happy. Sometimes Gadadhar Pandit would be there with Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya would say to Gadadhar Pandit, read something from the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj or Prahlad Maharaj from Srimad Bhagavatam. And Gadadhar Pandit would love to read and study Srimad Bhagavatam. So Lord Chaitanya would love to hear him, his narrations. So one time <clears throat> the, the Lord was just listening and he read the whole pastime of Prahlad Maharaj and he had finished and Lord Chaitanya said, read it again. <laughs> and so he read the whole pastime again and Lord Chaitanya said, read it again. And they spend the whole day just hearing. And sometimes when Davindas Thakur describes his pastime, says that the Lord would listen to these pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj and Dhruva Maharaj up to 100 times. He just loved. Two five-year-old boys. These were the Lord's favorite pastimes in Vrindavan, in Srimad Bhagavatam. And being read by the, the lotus lips of Gadadhar Pandit was so sweet. So they would, he would spend much time with Gadadhar Pandit. <clears throat> there are so many wonderful stories of the Lord's pastimes. To hear the glories of the Lord, to chant the glories of the Lord, to remember the glories of the Lord is the perfection of Krishna consciousness. Hearing leads to chanting, chanting leads to remembering, and remembering is the perfection of Krishna consciousness. Sometimes we say, well, I don't have a taste for hearing. How do I get a taste for hearing? Srimad Bhagavatam explains how to develop that taste. Shrusrusha saradhanasya vasudeva kata ruji shanmayat seva vipa purnya tirtana seva na by serving great souls, great service is done. And by such service, one gets an affinity to hear the message of Vasudev. So here's the key. By offering service to devotees, especially those who are fixed in execution of Krishna consciousness, 
that is great service. And by doing that, then Krishna, Srinvata Svakata Krishna Purnya Shravana Kirtanaha, Ridato Sto Abhadrani Vidhunoti Sarit Satam, that one de de develops the desire to hear and chant the glories of the Lord and do by that desire the Lord appears in the hearts of his devotee and he cleanses all material desires from the heart who develops eagerness to hear. The Lord is cleansing the heart from within when we develop the ta taste to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Nasta Prayeshu Abhradesham Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki By rendering devotional service to the pure devotee and by attending the classes or hearing Srimad Bhagavatam that all is inauspiciousness in the heart is practically destroyed and loving service unto the transcendental Lord who is glorified by uh, Sublime poetry is automatically awakened. Practically all of one's uh, material desires are destroyed through that process of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is an ocean of transcendental knowledge. I'm saving one particular pastime that I don't want to speak now. I'll speak it tonight and that's the Mahaprakash Leela. So that's tonight, uh, that's the most beautiful of all Lord Chaitanya, from my, when we say opinion, his most beautiful Leela, his Mahaprakash Leela. So we'll speak that tonight starting at 7.15. But there's so many other wonderful pastimes of the Lord. I can go back and mention how, you know, Advaita Charya was never happy. <laughs> that Lord Chaitanya was seeing him as seen or as always worship him. And so Lord, the Dvaita Charya was thinking, what can I do to get the Lord to worship me? He's always honoring me as a superior, and this is, this is becoming very disturbing. I cannot accept that. I wanna, I'm his servant, and he's treating me as, you know, as his master. So Dvaita did something really heavy. <laughs> He was, he, he went out and started to hear Yoga Vashishta, which is, talks about karma and jnana is superior to bhakti. And he was hearing from people who were preaching that. It's somewhat mayavad. And then the word got back to Lord Chaitanya, this is what Advaita is doing, Advaita, Lord Chaitanya is thinking, what is Advaita doing? He knows why I've come. Lord Chaitanya, he, this, he became quite angry, <clears throat> but he controlled his anger. Then one day he said to Lord Nityananda, Advaita was at Shantipur at the time, <clears throat> and he said to Lord Nityananda, let's go visit Advaita. <laughs> All right, so they took the road along the Ganges, going from Navadweep towards Shantipur. And they were walking along and they were on their way, they were singing together and then they passed this little hermitage and uh, Lord Chaitanya said, oh, who lives there? And Lord Nityananda said, this is sannyasi, he lives there. Oh, really? Let's go get his blessings. Okay, so they went inside and the sannyasi was there, he was elderly. And they sat down and then the, they said to the sannyasi, uh, can you, my dear sannyasi, can you tell us the goal of life? <laughs> you know, you're supposed to inquire. <laughs> so the sannyasi said, yes, thank you for asking, good question. The <laughs> goal of life is to eat, drink, and be merry, and enjoy. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya said, actually the goal of life is to worship Krishna in devotion. <laughs> And the sannyasi got a little disturbed. He said, just see, here we are, senior in all respects, and these young babes who are just coming out of the womb of their mother, and they're telling us what is the goal of life. And so now, when that started, and then Lord Chaitanya started to respond again, and Nityananda said, no, 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 no let's not fight. <laughs> he said, let's have some prasadam. 
And the sannyasi said, yes, actually, Prashadam is just ready now. So the sannyasi calls his wife, and he was a grihasta sannyasi. <laughs> <laughs> and the lady comes out, and she has a, play, a tray of all kinds of foodstuffs on it. And he's about to present it to Lord. And Lord Chaitanya said, actually, I'm only fasting from, I'm fasting today. Just give me a little fruit. No, no, you are my guest. You should have. And then the sannyasi said, would you like some bliss? And Lord Chaitanya looks at Lord Nityananda. <laughs> uh, what does he mean by bliss? He wants to know if you want some wine. <laughs> And Lord Chaitanya said, let's go. <laughs> so they ran out, jumped into the Ganga with their clothes on. <laughs> As it says, when you get contaminated, that's the only thing to do. <laughs> Jump into the holy rivers and get purified. <clears throat> so now they got dried off and then they're on their way. And they finally are going along the Ganges and finally they got to the house of Advaita. And Advaita is there, he's with his wife and, you know, Sati. And uh, Haridas Thakur is there also. Now Lord Chaitanya is at a distance and he's looking. There's that Advaita, what a rascal. And then he starts running full speed and he gets to Advaita and he starts beating the Advaita with his fist. He's punching him on the head. And Advaita is really enjoying it. <laughs> he's accepting me as his servant. And Sachi says, oh no, my lord, he's an old man, you'll kill him, <laughs> don't beat him. The Dwight is smiling, <laughs> he's accepting me as his servant, ah. And Harry Dastakor was laughing. <laughs> and then the lord came and started coming, he said, Advaita, what are you doing? You know why I've come, why are you teaching this other? He said, my dear lord, <laughs> I, please accept me as your servant. <laughs> and the Lord didn't know what to say. But Lord Chaitanya's mission is <clears throat> Amayavadi Krishna Aparadi. <laughs> that the Mayavadis are offenders to Krishna. Those who think that <clears throat> the living entity is non different than the Lord. Of course, there is difference in non-difference, chintya beta beta tattva, and that the, the, these, the Lord and the living entities are one and different, but the oneness is in quality, not in quantity. The Lord is nityo nityanam chaitanas chaitananam eko bahuda viradanti kaman. He is the nityana. He is a nityo who maintains all the other nityas, and we are nityanam. Eko Bahura Vidadati, he is one and there's no one equal to or greater than him. But Mayavadi philosophy says, or we call it Mayavadi philosophy, not, not <laughs> philosophy, philosophy, that <laughs> there's, you know, you know they, they make the, and sometimes they, they look like they're actually worshiping the Lord. They chant and they worship deities, but they think, Beyond the chanting, beyond the deities, you need forms for worship, but beyond the form is the formless, unmanifested, absolute truth, which is the highest aspect of spiritual attainment. And you are that, what is it, so hum, you are also that. But so hum doesn't mean you are that, it means that you are spirit, that's all it means. It doesn't mean you are the supreme spirit. They say, so hum. So Lord Chaitanya is very strong. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada said that the essence of Lord Chaitanya's teaching is to destroy this idea that the living entity is the supreme. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya, not only was he the supreme, but he took the role of the devotee to teach the principle that the living entity actually is the eternal servant of the Lord and loving devotional service. And that is his particular mission. And so uh, he performed that in so many different ways. And when he was with the Mayavadis and Banaris of Prakasananda Saraswati, when he was chanting and dancing in the streets, <clears throat> the Mayavadis were finding fault with him. 
thinking, what is this? He says, just some sentimentalist. He just sings and dances with other, other sentimentalists. And Lord Chaitanya, <clears throat> he wanted to reach every aspect of life. So he came to visit Prakasananda and Saraswati along with his 60,000 Mayavadi followers. And when he came into their assembly, he sat in the most obscure place. He came where people, when they first come in, they wash their feet. It's a very uncomplete, clean place, and he sat there. And Prakasananda knew that this person was also initiated by Keshava Bharati, who was a Mayavadi Sanasi. Lord Chaitanya took sannyas from Keshava Bharati because that was the tradition at the time, because the Mayavadis were prominent, and so Lord Chaitanya followed that. But it doesn't mean he was a Mayavadi philosopher, uh, sannyasi. <clears throat> That's a whole story that I didn't narrate, but you can read that in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So when Prakasananda Saraswati, and the Lord just sat there, and it was so humble, he didn't say anything. And then Prakasananda Saraswati said, come, come be with us. You are, you know, you're initiated by Kesha Babarti, but actually you should get reinitiated into a higher Mayavadi Sampradaya, because the Babarti Sampradaya is kind of a low one. You should get into the Saraswati. So they're the, they're the real ones. <laughs> Prakasananda Saraswati. There was ten different Mayavadis, you know, what we say, echelons of different initiations. And <clears throat> why are you chanting and dancing with sentimentalists? You should be like us, miserable. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Mayavadis, you know, they just they just talk like, you know, everything is Maya, and you're Maya, I'm Maya, we're all Maya, but I'm God, and therefore everything is God, and God has become Maya, but Maya is now going to become God again, and so the only enjoyment is the idea that I'm God. <laughs> they don't chant, they don't dance. I remember when I went to one, this was many, many years ago, the year 2004, there was a congregation, uh, the World Parliament Religions in in Barcelona, Spain, and I was with Srub Damodar Goswami Maharaj. We were together, and we were uh, the assembly of the, the Hindu culture that night, different Hindu groups. Would go. So the Mayavadis took the stage and took the whole program over, and we were there. And so we were there, and then, uh, you know, Bhakti Srub Damodar Maharaj, he's really humble. He was just sitting there, and they were just talking their nonsense, and they were talking, and I was listening, and I was crying, I was getting angry. They were saying that the goal of life is to enjoy, and here's how to do it. <laughs> we're just, you just have to learn how to enjoy, you know. And it's just, you know we have it, and you, we'll give it to you. And so, they, you know, they were just so arrogant. And then at one point, one of the Mayavadis, who was a leader, he invited Sarup Damodar. Goswami to sit with him, and he did. He sat with all the Mayavadis. They asked him to speak something. They all were speaking their nonsense. So he spoke, and he started. He what is that verse? Vasudeva kata, Vasudeva kata, Vasudeva, Vasudeva. Is, everything is Vasud. It's in the Bhagavatam, huh? No, Vasudeva. Paraveda, Vasudeva, Kata, Mukham, Vasudeva. Vasudeva is everything. He was saying this. this was, and I don't think they got it. <laughs> but he was just, he spoke this thing, and then at the end, you know, then we decided, the devotees were there, we decided to have kirtan. And most of all the other people were mesmerized by the, by the Mayavadis. They had come, they didn't know what to expect. And so we just had kirtan. As soon as we had kirtan, all the Mayavadis got up and left. They didn't want. And all the people who were there, they stayed and started to dance. And, and it's the first time during that whole night, everybody was happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen to these Mayavadis, you're just like, oh, God. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, they don't give you anything. 
And one senior devotee told me, Mayavadi means miserable. <laughs> Because they, you know, what do they do? Philosophy. I mean, if you sit and talk philosophy all the time, I mean, it's. What I mean, where's our happiness? Singing, dancing, and I shouldn't say this because it's too early, but <laughs> feasting. <laughs> Three things. Yeah, that's Lord Chaitanya's mission. You know, chanting, dancing, and feasting. That's that's Lord and philosophy, but real philosophy, not philosophy. The real stuff. What is that philosophy that Jiva uh, Sarupai Krishnera Nitya Das, and that we are eternal servants of Krishna, and the happiness that the the servant experience in serving the supreme Lord is greater than the happiness that the Lord gets by by accepting the service of his. It says that the devotee enjoys as much as the Lord by serving the Lord in pure loving devotion. That's the special feature of bhakti that gives such great happiness. And the happiness that the devotees experience actually conquers the Lord. And therefore it says that there's three things, Bhagavan, Bhakti, and Bhakta. And Bhagavan becomes conquered by Bhakti, Bhakta, who has Bhakti. So Bhakti is the highest. Bhakti is so superior to even Krishna, that even bhakti is, can conquer Krishna when bhakti is pure. And that's Krishna. And so, devotees are always in the best position because they're always connected with the Supreme Lord. They don't want to become the Lord. All they want to do is to serve the Lord and please the Lord by the Lord's service. And they know simply by pleasing the Lord that that's the perfection of life. Because then the Lord becomes inclined to his devotee, and when the Lord glances at the devotee, that's the, and then the devotee receives the ultimate benediction of the mercy of the Lord. If you get recognized by the Lord just once in your life, then your life is perfect. What is that recognition? <laughs> Lord Chaitanya taught three main principles. Namruchi, Vaishnav Seva, Jiva Doya. Jiva Doya means to somehow give the mercy that you have received to those who are unfortunate, those who don't have that mercy. <clears throat> and Lord Chaitanya said, you know, those who, who give this mercy to others automatically get the full mercy of the Lord. So, so that's the key to Krishna consciousness is to somehow or other and Srila Prabhupada mentions that, that each one of us, whatever we know, whatever position we have, whoever we are, we can somehow or other use whatever facility the Lord has given us to somehow inspire others in Krishna consciousness. It can be done from any position. And those who make that a focus in their life actually uh, are noticed by the Lord. Prabhupada said, if you are noticed by the Lord, then your life is perfect. <laughs> so where was I? I was on another subject. <laughs> I, can, I forgot where I was. Oh, my body. See? Oh, yeah. So, so there. Um, so Prakasananda Saraswati was trying to encourage Lord Chaitanya, you know, to, you know, be like us, discuss philosophy. And Lord Chaitanya said, my spiritual master told me I was a fool. I should just chant Hare Krishna, that's all. <laughs> and then he, he, he took the humble position and he explained, and, but the, what attracted the, the Mayavadis was he was so effulgent. His effulgence permeated the whole room. And they could see that. And so when he started to speak about the importance of chanting Hare Krishna, they actually accepted it. For somehow or either, by the presence of Lord Chaitanya, their hearts were changed. And he converted 60,000 Mayavadis to become Vaishnavas along with Prakasananda Saraswati, simply by two things, 
his personal effulgence and his humility. Prabhupada says, when you want to preach, people don't really want it. Especially if you preach in Western countries, I know for sure people are, maybe now more than ever, people want it because of the crises in the world. But general people want something better materially. They're always looking for to improve their material life. So he said, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati awful emphasizes, and Lord Chaitanya T taught it, preaching means trinata peace and ichena. Tayori Vasa Hishnana, Amanina Mamanadena, Kirtaniya Sadarahi. Then, then one can be somewhat, people will listen more when we exhibit these qualities of tolerance and patience, putting ourselves in a position of trying to receive, but at the same time trying to give while, while we receive it. In other words, a position of humility. I remember, <clears throat> I don't know if I should say this, but I'll say it. <clears throat> I got in, there was one devotee who was criticizing a very senior devotee. <clears throat> and I didn't like it. <laughs> so I wanted to change his mind. So, I went to him and I started to speak about the glories of this devotee. And he didn't want to hear it. So but he was he was just getting really strong and heavy and he was starting to get angry at me. And I didn't get angry. I just stood there like this. And I was just keeping my trying to keep not get disturbed. And I stayed like this, and he was firing all kinds of things at me, blaming me for siding with the person. And after a while, and I kept speaking about the glories of this person, he completely changed. At one point, he just fell down and offered obeisances to me, and he apologized. And later on, he went to that senior devotee, and he apologized for everything he had said. All I did was stay like this, you know. <laughs> I didn't do anything, but I didn't change, and it's, it worked. I realized that this is one of the ways to defuse a person's argument, is the humility that one, and people are attracted to that. I'm not humble at all. I'm more like, you know, the opposite, but I tried it one time, <laughs> and it worked, <laughs> so. <laughs> and so, it has a effect, and Lord Chaitanya, it was very effective in chanting and changing three sixty thousand Mayavadi sannyasis to become Vaishnavas simply by his his presence in a in a very humble way. So he taught that's in that way when you get opposed to some that humility is actually a is a uh, very powerful weapon when you present Krishna consciousness in that mood. <clears throat> If you argue, nobody gets anywhere, right? Just go back and forth and stuff like this, stuff like that. Okay, so we're coming up to the end of our time. <coughs> so, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Srivasari Gaur Bhaktavinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai, Sri Gaur Purnima Ki Jai, Sri Maha Mahotsava, Sri Avir Bhav, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande, Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Hare Krishna.
Thank you very, very much, Maharaj. We are very much grateful to you for such wonderful Chaitanya Leela here. All devotees got absorbed in hearing such a beautiful, enlightening class. Maharaj, we are very much grateful and again we are eager to hear in evening. So let's express our gratitude to Maharaj by loudly chanting three times. His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami Maharaj Ki. Shri Gauranga Mahaprabhu Ki. Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna, there are few announcements. As all of us uh, are aware that uh, there is a very wonderful offering by His Grace Sila Hardas Thakur Prabhu. The, this offering is in the form of art and uh, this art is being presented in Jahangir Art Gallery. This art is titled as Sri Guru Vani Varnan, Artistic Glorification of Sila Prabhupada's Art and Culture. So this uh, art is going on from 15th March 2022 and it will continue till 21st March 2022, that is Monday. The timings are from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily. These are really very, very exclusive exhibition of portrait painting of Sula Hardas Thakur. All, all these paintings are made by him. So he has kindly invited all the devotees that uh, whenever you get time in between 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., you may kindly go there and uh, take the darshan of Sula Prabhupada in form of these paintings. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Also, now, from uh, now till evening, the Kirtan will continue in this temple. So all the devotees are also requested that they may join the Kirtan. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.